Hey guys, you're watching part two of a four part video series. If you click on the video thumbnails for parts one, three, or four, a new tab will open with the corresponding video playing. If you're a mobile user, I will have the same links down in the description for you to click on. With that being said, enjoy the video! Hey guys, so finally, here is how I made this DIY 3D aquarium background. So the first thing that I did was I measured out the back panel of my aquarium onto this plastic. This is just the plastic that they use in tabletops and stuff. You can get it at any fabric store or you can also use like pond liner or a big trash bag or you can also do this directly onto your aquarium but I just rather have the option to take out the background one day if I ever needed to for whatever reason so yeah totally up to you so you guys know that I love the texture of bark and I just love the way it looks so I love using it in my backgrounds but you can totally leave out the bark if you can't find any, if it's not available to you, or if you just plain don't want to use it. Totally fine. Here is just me gathering some, well a lot of it actually, for the background. And here is a piece of plastic that I'm going to be using to glue everything onto. It's actually the old piece of plastic from my old background that I made from my old background video DIY. And here is the aquarium where it's going to be going into. And if you guys haven't seen part one, don't forget to watch it because that is how I show you guys how I made it like a faux in wall. But yeah. So what I did is I marked with a marker where the filter intake was going to sit on the plastic end just because I want to have like the intake of the filter to be hidden like within the background. And here I'm just cleaning off the bark because it has like a lot of dust and little dirt particles and I just took this brush and I brushed one by one. Oh, look at my nails. Look at my nails. Aren't they cute? <laughs> so I just took this brush and brushed every single piece of bark that I thought I would use. Well, all of them. I brushed all of them off. And you'd be surprised how many little bugs and stuff were in there. And here's the little bark pieces that were just too small and I probably won't use them. And here's all the dust that I brushed off. And here is all the cleaned off bark pieces ready to be used. I'm also going to be using some sand just to kind of create a rough texture and you guys will see what I'm talking about in a second when I'm actually making the background. But yeah, you're going to need some sand. So this is just to show you guys, all of you who are giving me like crap about me using bark in my old background. You guys were like, oh my god, why are you using bark? It's gonna rot underwater and it's gonna make a mess and it's blah blah blah. Take that, you negative people. So here is the bark from that background. This bark was submerged underwater for more than a year and it is just as strong as the new bark. So what I'm going to be doing to make the background is this spray foam type thing. You guys probably know this as like great stuff even though I couldn't find the brand great stuff here but 
it's the same thing, you just need some spray foam. And here I'm just kind of laying out the bark pieces because you're not really going to have the time to choose through a big pile of bark which ones you want to use because the spray foam starts hardening right away and you got to press them in there before it starts to expand so yeah I just laid them out to make things easier And here I'm just tracing out the filter intake tunnel thing that I'm going to be making. So that is where the filter intake is going to rest. And I found this piece of styrofoam that was the perfect size to the little ending there of a little filter intake but you can use anything like crumbled up newspaper or just anything you just need something there of the same size and now I'm just taking this plastic bag but you can use anything really I'm just gonna use it in between the styrofoam and the spray foam so that I can just slide the styrofoam off later on once the whole background is done. And here it is all secured with the tape. And this is what I'm talking about. So here I'm just making sure that my filter intake tube slides in there with no problem. And it does. Yay. And finally we are going to get started with the actual background making. So first you gotta open up your can and kind of insert the little straw there on the little spray thingy there and you know get it ready so I'm working in small sections and I'm squeezing out foam and then I'm kind of running the straw through it to kind of give it like a rough texture if you know what I mean And then very quickly, I'm pressing some random pieces of bark into it. And that's it. That's basically how I'm going to do this throughout the whole background. And at first I took my time picking out the perfect piece of bark that would go next to that piece of bark. But yeah, I quickly learned that you really need to work fast when you're doing this because the foam starts to harden up really fast and then the sand doesn't stick to it and then I'm just taking the sand and kind of sprinkling it on top and it's not necessarily to cover up the foam it's just so that you kind of get like a rough texture that way when you coat it in the cement it will stick better and you guys will know what I'm talking about when I get there <laughs> So yeah, here is the making of the background in super fast forwarded speed 
and it's just basically the same thing throughout the whole thing, just, yeah. Okay, so when it was time to do the filter intake section, I just sprayed the foam there in the top and I just kind of let it drip onto the rest of the background. And then I pressed the sand down onto it. And you guys see what I'm talking about there? It just kind of started collapsing. But it actually ended up creating like really awesome textures. So it was a happy accident. So I ran out of this spray foam. One can was just not enough. But while I went to go buy some more, here is the background all dry the next day. And I'm just dusting some of the sand off there. And here is what it looks like in the other side. And here I'm just sliding out the styrofoam and there it is. That is beautiful. We are going to hide the filter intake and the aquarium heater and anything that you don't want in your tank. So the foam expanded bigger than the size of the piece of plastic. So we're going to need to trim. And here it is with the excess foam pieces cut out. And it was really, really easy to cut. I just used this kitchen knife and it cuts right through it with no mess. So I put the background inside of the aquarium and I'm marking with a marker where the filter is gonna be resting on to kind of carve around it. And now I'm just kind of carving a little bit where the filter is going to be resting on just to kind of make it easier for the filter outtake to flow out. And here I just wanted to show you guys where I carved out like little random holes for water to flow in so that it will go up the filter intake. So there's a little cut out there. And there's another cut out there. And because they're on the side you can't see them when you're looking at the background like if you're standing in front of it. So yeah, there's just like random little holes cut out here and there. And now the filter fits really nicely over the background. So here's the background after I went to go buy another can of spray foam and I didn't record me making this because it's the same thing except I didn't use the sand and I added like more details and dimension and now I'm just carving out more texture 
you know, texture is good. So now we are going to add our first layer of cement. So the first layer of cement, you want to make it really, really watery. I used just a small amount of the powder and a whole bunch of water and then I'm just mixing it up with this straw. I don't know why I'm using a straw, but I'm using a straw. And I'm just going to be using this paintbrush here to paint it onto the background. So yeah, just paint the cement onto your background. It's really easy because it's really runny and this is where the sand comes in handy. So the parts where I didn't use sand in, the cement was just really not sticking to it. It was too smooth even with the texture. And then the parts where I used the sand, it just clinged onto that better. And I'm avoiding the bark until the very last layer. And here it is after the first layer of cement. Okay, so now I'm just taking some charcoal and powderizing it. And I'm gonna be using that to create like a darker color. I'm just crushing it really tiny into like powder. But you could totally use cement colors. They come in liquid form or powder. And then you mix it onto your cement. And then your concrete comes out like really awesome colors. But I'm just using the charcoal as an alternative for anybody who might not have those available. Plus, it's more natural. So for my second layer of cement, I'm using like one and a half parts charcoal powder to one part concrete powder and one part dirt. And then just enough water to make like a thick soupy type texture. So you want it to be thicker than the first layer that you put on there, but not too thick and then just paint it onto your background. And here it is, all painted. And now I'm just taking this smaller brush. This is actually a makeup brush, to be honest. But I'm just using it to really get in there in the parts where my other brush wouldn't reach. And now for the third layer of cement, I'm using one and a half parts charcoal powder, one part cement, and one part soil and this time you want to make it a lot thicker like this thick and paint it onto your background and this time I kind of am painting a little bit the bark but not covering it 100% because you don't want to hide all that beautiful texture so since this third layer is a lot thicker you can actually create like really rough texture with it just kind of stipple on the cement and then with the same brush you can create like little peaks here and make it look like a rock it's really awesome since this is your last layer add any textures that you'd like and just know that this is your last layer And this is what it looked like all dry. So now to add more dimension, I'm just taking a little bit of the cement powder. 
and water with no charcoal or soil just it'll be a lighter color and I'm just barely painting it onto the background and this is really gonna add dimension to your background just paint it like on the very very top so to that same mix I just added some clay powder that I have that I use for like my facials and stuff but I just added like a small amount and it turned this really pretty brownish reddish color and then I'm gonna use that to add more dimension so I'm just painting the tops again just here and there the little parts so the very deep textures in your background are like a really dark color and then the very very tops are like a grayish reddish color and this really makes the whole thing just pop And here it is once I was done applying it. And here is the background all dry. And here is what the inside looks like. So yeah, there's a lot of texture on there and I love it. I loved the end result and I hope you guys did too. So we are done making the background and next I'm going to show you guys how to neutralize the pH of the background because concrete has really really high pH and you can't just install it into your aquarium and then put your fish in there because they're gonna die so you need to neutralize the pH of the concrete before you add it into your aquarium I will show you guys how I did that in the next video so in part 3 of this video series also don't forget that if you guys do decide to make this background take pictures and send them to me on any of my social media sites all the links to my social media sites are linked down in the description so yeah, I really want to see pictures, so send them. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I will talk to you guys in the next video. Bye! Don't forget, this was part two of a four-part video series. Click on numbers one, three, or four, and it will take you to part one, three, or four of this video series.